In the whirlwind of scrutiny and headlines, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have locked themselves in a complex battle with the media. This ongoing struggle has captivated the public with opinions often divided. But who is winning the public relations battle? I'm Morgan Tremaine, and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have sought to reclaim their narrative, aiming to establish themselves as independent voices separate from the confines of the royal family and the media's influence. They've been vocal about their struggles with mental health, racial bias, and invasion of privacy. Supporters argue that their decision to step back from royal duties was a courageous and necessary step towards preserving their mental well-being. The couple has utilized various platforms to connect with the public, including social media and high-profile interviews. By speaking candidly about their experiences, they've resonated with many who have faced similar challenges. Moreover, Meghan Markle's journey as a biracial woman thrust into the spotlight has sparked conversations about systemic racism in the monarchy. Their transparency and willingness to address such topics have struck a chord with those advocating for social progress. Now on the media side. Critics argue that the media's relentless coverage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is simply a reflection of the public interest in the lives of the royals. They contend that the couple's actions, including the decision to step back from royal duties, inevitably invites media scrutiny. Media outlets maintain their coverage is within the bounds of responsible journalism, offering balanced perspectives. Some argue that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been selective in their approach to engage with the media, opting for high-profile interviews while avoiding scrutiny from more traditional sources. This strategy, critics say, has positioned them as victims of media media intrusion, fostering sympathy among their supporters while conveniently omitting potential counter-arguments. In addition, the couple's use of social media and interviews has opened them up to criticism and claims of hypocrisy. Detractors argued that their efforts to control the narrative clash with their privacy concerns as they continue to live in the public eye. This ongoing exposure, they argue, negates claims of seeking privacy and fuels the media's relentless pursuit of their story. But in the court of public opinion, the press is surprisingly winning. Following the standard public relations playbook, Harry and Meghan should be beloved. They've portrayed themselves as relatable and genuine, both qualities that the public typically embraces. However, their complaints from a position of privilege have raised questions about their justifications. Harry asserts that everyone is entitled to privacy, but the unfortunate reality is that privacy rights in the U.S. are severely lacking. In contrast, the UK has the Human Rights Act of 1998, which recognizes the right to privacy. Nevertheless, this right doesn't apply if the person is of public interest, a category that the royal family falls into from birth. Thus, their attempts to preserve privacy face challenges, with many considering this to be just the cost of fame. And what sets this couple apart from other celebrities is the relentless scrutiny from UK tabloids. These publications make TMZ look tame, and British defamation laws make it extremely difficult for celebrities to prove their innocence. Moreover, the paparazzi in the UK relentlessly pursued their targets. And while there are conflicting stories about how the alleged two-hour chase through New York went down, at least one paparazzo admitted to the New York Times that they did chase Harry and Meghan. But it's very unlike New York paps to chase, so this is likely the work of UK photographers now operating in the US to feed British tabloids. But regardless of what happened in New York, Harry is dealing with childhood trauma associated with being chased by the paparazzi. His mother's tragic death, often attributed to the paparazzi's actions, deeply impacted him. Harry himself has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, and he continues to be hounded. These circumstances undoubtedly affect their ability to navigate the media landscape and utilize it to their advantage. So with the trauma he endured, why haven't Harry and Meghan just chosen to disappear? One crucial truth that often gets overlooked is you don't leave money on the table. Harry received a multi-million dollar book deal that required him to make the talk show rounds, and Netflix backed up yet another money truck, all while being called hypocrites and liars on TV. This strained relationship prevented them from fully controlling the narrative and really Kardashianing the situation. Now reports suggest that they are done trashing the royal family, indicating a potential shift. So now is their chance to have a new narrative and own it, use the publicity to their advantage. The interplay between privacy rights, media scrutiny, and the royal family's public image was always going to be tough to navigate. And while the couple's complaints may come off as privileged, it is crucial to consider the unique circumstances with intrusive media and personal trauma. Moving forward, they may find ways to leverage publicity for their charitable efforts or for other endeavors, but ultimately this fight boils down to a balance between privacy and public life in the face of excessive notoriety. Thanks for watching.